Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm going to keep this really brief because the cows and calves are still roaring um, and you don't want to be listening to that. Um, but I have my two cows and two calves in. They came in handy enough, in fairness. So that was all right. Um, Dad is above just taking a gate off or loosening a bracket anyway. I'll go up and help him now to take the gate off because that little loud one up there roaring she's going to be tested and everything in the pen and dad saw somewhere on youtube where they attached a small gate to the head gate of the pen and they were able to use it as a crush then for a calf that was too big for a crate and too small for a crush so we're hoping that will work today so i'll go up there in a minute to help him our crush is ready i have the gate set up out there as well um, I'm stopping it to try and block out the roaring, but it's near impossible. So as well as the testing today, we also need to do the blood test for the IBR, which is a respiratory tract virus in the cattle and can lead to pneumonia and things like that. So 20 of the 22 need to be tested for that. I said in the video with the heifer, uh, the Angus heifer, that I was down to 21, but I forgot about twins so I still have 22 um, but we have to test 20 which is a bit of a pain I wish it was more a percentage of the amount of cattle you have rather than everyone does 20 but anyway it is what it is so we'll see what the handiest 20 are and we'll do those um, yeah hopefully hopefully it'll go okay what is that twin do what are you doing what is that um but anyway we'll get going anyway i'll record what i can the weather as you can see i'm in my waterproofs um it is not a nice day although it's kind of drying up a bit um and hopefully it stays like that for the testing but we'll see i'll record what i can and let you know how we get on anyway so a few people were a bit concerned about my dad and the loader um probably rightly so in terms of me not being able to see him as easily as I would um, in the tractor. But I forgot to mention this also has a reversing camera, which is very handy as well. So at least I do know what's behind me at all times, um, which is handy. I'm just here in the loader now waiting for this delivery to come. It's funny. They said, oh, he's ringing me. I'll be back. That delivery man was hilarious. I was going to say they told me I had to unload it myself. And I was like, oh, sure, I have no way of unloading it. And then I was like, I have a loader. Now, I was very nervous about having to do it, especially in front of someone when I'm not used to it. But your man actually had a pallet truck. And in fairness to him, he abused that machine and got it in there um, by the bales. So... I'm actually okay. I don't even need to do it. Um, so I'm going to take off the pallet forks now and put on the bale spike just so I have it ready for the next bale I put in tomorrow, probably. Um, and I'll be good to go. So um, I might show you. Can I show you it without showing what he brought is the thing. I might be able to. We'll see. Dad's always saying to me, I use silage tape for everything but actually taping up the silage bales. But I used it again um, for the loader because, oh, and I'm after tearing it a bit. But anyway, I put it on either side of where the attachment needs to hook up 
because somebody oh. told me to use like spray paint or something but sure all I had down here was the silage tape and it definitely made it a lot easier for me to do it that time the lads that delivered the spikes said or the fork whatever um said if I put it up on top of a few pallets it's a lot easier to just hook it up because I can actually see because what I'm doing is leaning over to see if I can see it and then I'm not sure if I have it and then I get out to check but in fairness I was happy enough with how quickly I put those on there now but if I have a few pallets up above I think I might actually bring them down just to make it a bit easier it's so funny when I'm driving as well I really drive it like a granny I can't sit back in the seat I need to just get used to it just relax a bit but um yeah, that should be ideal now for the bales and very handy. I'll just be able to flip them and everything, hopefully. It's, look at the confidence, you know. <laughs> we'll see what I'm like now tomorrow when I actually have to do it. But that's everything. That's all my deliveries and stuff. Um, just waiting on the vet now. So I'm going to go up, have a cup of tea and relax for a while because i um, not entirely sure what time he'll be here. <laughs> Right, so the first thing we started to do anyway was the TB testing. I say we because, you know, I was acting as the veterinary assistant for the day, <laughs> making the little notes and writing down the figures just as he was shaving and measuring um, on the neck. So it just kind of sped things up a little bit, really. But um, in fairness, they were all very well behaved. Um, and I didn't show the blood test on these guys because I'm going to show it in a second. But honestly, very straightforward and um, special through a leg out at one stage at the start. All right. But uh, no harm done. So she was fine. And then um, these were the last ones to be done, the calves. So they were a bit confused with the crush because they'd never gone down it before. They'd only gone up it. Um, so that took a little bit of persuasion. But my man, Sheehan. Uh, did well so we did the testing on them next and you can just see here now I'm showing the blood test for the IBR so that's what it is it's just a little vial of blood is taken from the archery in the tail so in fairness to them they didn't seem to take much notice of it and um, I thought it would drive them wild altogether but I don't know Maybe because he was so quick at doing it, um, it didn't bother them, but they were very well behaved and then they needed a little encouragement to get out of here and back in again, but not too bad. And then the last one we had actually was the calf inside. So this is our little makeshift crush, which actually did the job quite well. She wasn't happy at the start, obviously, because she didn't know what was going on. Plus she was on her own, which is never nice for them. But just having that gate there did mean that it just allowed the vet to have a proper look at her as well as do the TB testing and the IBR testing. Um, she did settle down after a while, but um, we'd probably use that method again. Um, I was surprised by how much she actually quietened down. And even here now, he's wrapping the rope around her leg and tightening it up just so that he can raise the leg and look at the hoof as well to make sure that it's not actually an issue with the hoof that's causing her lameness and she was very good very well behaved I must say there was no major drama out of her and in fairness he did do a good inspection on her and she just stood there and allowed it to happen so I'm sure she wouldn't be rushing in there but uh, she was happy enough, thankfully. Now, surprise, surprise, my battery went dead again yesterday. So uh, I just about was able to record the bit of testing the blood sampling and of the calf here. But I must say they were good as gold. Um, 
it really did go very smoothly. Even the vet commented on how well behaved they were, but maybe he says that to every suckler farmer. <laughs> but um, no, in fairness, they were all very good. I was a bit concerned, as I mentioned, about the blood sampling. I didn't know how they'd take it, but even Norma was good. That one, she'll set them all off now. But uh, they're a bit quieter today, as you can see, which is great. But um, yeah, look, all went very smoothly. We'll get the results now um, on Saturday. So I'll finish this video with the results anyway. But unfortunately, not great news about the calf here. Where is she? So he checked her leg and he thinks that she might have had a fracture, a little fracture at some stage and because we didn't get it seen to straight away he thinks it might have fused incorrectly which is really annoying because of course you're saying to yourself why didn't we just get him to check it sooner um so that is disappointing but um look he gave her some pain relief to see if that will help her just move the knee a bit it seems to be the knee is just straightened she did bend it a couple of times but yeah she just doesn't want to bend it so that'd be an awful pity because she is a decent calf in fairness probably one of the best that cow has given us because um usually they're not amazing but this is the second calf of hers now that has had an issue with the back leg but look maybe maybe it'll loosen out he's going to have another look at her now for such a small calf she has such a deep bellow but um yeah look he'll have another look on saturday to see if it loosened out any bit but yeah it's not looking great unfortunately um but for now i need to put in another bale they cleaned the place yeah Big Red is looking for her silage now, so I'll throw in a bale. I need to clean out the pen as well, uh, just while it's good and wet. It'll be an easy job for me. Uh, we also have the board Bia inspection today, um, but to be honest, I'm happy enough with the place. I don't think we need to do anything, and look, if we do, they'll certainly tell us anyway if we do, but uh, hopefully now the place is in good shape. And there's not too much to do, so um, look, I'll get the silage in and quiet them a little bit, I hope. Um, I might give you a view of me doing the bail from inside the loader um, and see how I go. I'll, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Can you hear that? Complete silence <laughs> for the first time in three days. Just chewing, music to my ears, so it is. Um, but another bail in 
Um, happy enough with that. In fairness, the spike is no bother at all. In fairness, um, a lot easier than the grab. Now, the grab is not going to defeat me. I only used it once. I might use it again, but I just don't really need to use it at the moment. I use the spike. Now, I did just break up the bale. I moved a bit up to the calves and then I piped it to the cows. So we got the results of the TV test and I'm sure as you can tell from my thumbnail and description of this video it's absolutely not what number one I was expecting, number two what I wanted. So we've one gone down, the cemental heifer that's in calf, not the red and white one but the fully red one with the white head. She was due to calve early January and now that's her and the calf gone and that's us locked down. Um, just when we were ready to sell of course and yeah when you've that money spent already as well. Um, so yeah um, look at least it's only one. And hopefully it will only be one. Hopefully we'll get the all clear. We'll need two tests now to be clear before we can sell again. But I'm just hoping she's the only one. She's already been separated from the rest of them. We're going to try and keep her in the field beside the shed here on her own. I don't know if she'll stay there on her own. We'll have to think of something else if she won't. Um, because we don't want her in the shed with the others obviously. But um, yeah. I was going to record another bit today of just moving them and everything, but I'm not going to do that now. I'm just going to leave it there. Um, because, yeah, I'm sick of it, to be honest. And, yeah. So, I almost cursed. It's a miracle I haven't cursed, actually. But, um, yeah, look, I'll leave it there. Thanks again for watching. If you liked it, give me a like. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. Thank you.